In this subboard review, we're going to look at one of the most radical surf shapes that we've seen in 2018. This is the Fat Stick 8 foot Sup Skate. Fat Stick are a relatively small UK based brand that do specialise in making sort of surf cruisy boards for the mid to heavyweight riders. The specifications for this sup skate, it's eight foot long, 32 inches wide. It comes in at 130 liters because of that. It's 3.74 inches thick, so it's not that thick. It weighs 14 kilograms, so a little bit of weight there, but it only retails at 599 pounds. And it's finished off and comes as standard as a quad setup, but you can also run it as a two plus one as well. The materials on the board, nothing super fancy, just a solid EPS foam core with multiple layers of glass and a gel coat outer finish. So moving on to our subboard impressions, well, as we said, this is the most radical board we've seen in 2018. Not so much in its length and its width, but really its outline template. A nice parallel outline to the board, a round to square nose on the board, but bringing back towards the tail, really square in the rails to a completely cut off tail there. The most extreme tail shape we've seen on any board on the market to date. Looking at the fittings and features that are on this board, starting up at the nose, you've got your FCS mount there, which is really commonly used for sort of GoPro action camera footage. Nice big EVA deck pad. Really like the way that the EVA deck pad goes right up forward and they've incorporated the fat stick logo. That looks really smart. Moving into the middle of the board, one thing that we've seen that we haven't seen on any other board on the market is a good length windsurfing mast track, opposed to sort of the screw in threads that you find on some other boards. The handle's nice, nice and recessed, pretty comfy. Moving back, you've got your pressure valve all built in there. The EVA deck pad is really comfy, covers the whole length of the board, and it's finished off with a really big kicker at the back, which is great for ramming your foot against, because you do need to ram your foot against because of obviously the width of the board and having to get the most out of the board, which we'll go over in a minute. So in its overall thickness, this board isn't actually that thick. At 3.74 inches, it's smaller than a lot of the other boards of this volume on the market. In fact, it's probably the thinnest board on the market that we can think of. Because of that, the rails can be nicely pulled in, which then offer a lot more in the performance side of things with bottom turns and top turns. Pulled in nicely, not super sharp, quite a round soft rail all the way to the tail of the board there. Not as sharp as some boards, but does have a nice shape throughout the board. Moving on to the rock line shape, which is the curve from nose to tail. It's got a small amount of nose rocker at the nose there, pretty much flat to about the fin sections with a small amount of tail kick, really geared up for generating as much speed as possible. The curve or the bottom shape going across ways, if we got our straight edge out, Quite a different concept on this board than any other board in the market. It has a large concave in the center, but flats towards the rails of the board. So if we put it in the middle here, you can see it quite clearly. The concave is there holding the water in the middle of the board, but flat at the outside section of the board. And really the R&D and board design around that is so the, the water comes down the center of the board and holds in the concave and gets forced out the tail, which helps with speed of control. But a bit more having flatter edges on the side of the board will help generate speed as well, because a flatter board does produce more speed than a rocker or curved board. And looking right at the back, the principle's the same, still has the concave in the center and flat out towards the side of the rails. The fin setup it comes with as standard is the quad fin setup, which is what we've surfed it as, and you can run it as a two plus one. So you could run it with a bigger back center fin or even a small back center fin. It would have to be a US box or you'd have to have a US box adapter to put it in here. Because of the general width of the board and how the board ends really dramatically on the tail, this board and many other boards in the market with a similar sort of characteristics will all be designed around the sort of quad setup. But it's nice to know you can run it as a two plus one as well. So let's move on to the performance of the board on the water. Now standing on the board in the flats, it does offer a huge amount of stability. 32 inches wide, eight foot long, which is not really, really long, but it's very square in the nose and tail. So it's got a lot of stability up there at the nose and tail, which does make a difference when you are standing in the slightly choppy conditions. When paddling out, you do notice the board is a little bit slower and takes a bit more to get going than a more traditional base board. That's probably due to the larger concave under the board here and also it being relatively short for its width. When punching through waves or going over waves, obviously the board offers you that great stability, so it's quite easy to stay on top of the board when you've punched over the wave. But sometimes if you do go through the wave, because the board is relatively thin overall, but the nose is still relatively thick because they've got to keep the volume in there, it does tend to hit and knock you back a little bit. So again, you need a bit more power just to punch through the white water, but that's something to be expected with the volume up around the nose like it is. 
When paddling to catch a wave, because it's not the fastest of boards, you've got to put a bit more power in to catch the wave or just catch the wave a little bit later. But it does track really well in a straight line. So if you are a beginner intermediate and you're a little bit clumsy with your footwork or you find that board sort of goes off at an angle, it does tend to track well, so it makes paddling in really easy in that sense. On a wave, this board feels relatively fast for its size and for its weight, because it's not the lightest of boards. It feels very smooth on the face, but the first thing you do notice is the width of the tail here. You really have got to use your footwork from left to right to get the most out of the board into the bottom turn and then into the top turn. If you're more looking at it from a beginner, you can ride the board pretty much off the center and it will pretty much be there, give you a lot amount of grip towards the rails of the board and hold to the face because of the quad setup. You can throw and bank this board into turns and calves, but we really found it didn't really manoeuvre as much as we liked it to. That probably is to do with a really seriously cut off tail and having quite a lot of width at the tail there. So who do we think the 8 foot sup skate from Fatstick will suit? Well you're going to be a beginner, late beginner, let's say you've caught a few waves on a 10.5, maybe you're moving onto a smaller board, but really into the intermediate standard weighing 78 kilos to be per approximate to about 100 kilos. So something around the mid to heavyweight riders. The heavier riders can look at, they do this size and one size bigger again. But definitely if you're in a, for a, a cheaper end budget stubby nose board, that would be the sort of thing you want to look at. So pros and cons and value for money. Pros, it's a super stable board that will suit a wide range of good beginner to intermediate heavier riders. Cons, it's a little bit heavy for what it is and would be nice if I had a tiny bit more nose rocker to get you out of a few situations. Value for money, oh, £599, it is very cheap. So I'll let you guys answer that one. Hope you all found that sub board review interesting and informative. If you want to find out more about this board and what boards we compare it to, check out the sub border pro version of this video. But until next time, we'll see you on sub border or on YouTube. <laughs>